Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. As you may have noticed, today's Cut the Clutter comes to you from Bombay or Mumbai. I stand in front of the plaque that reminds us that this square is named after Murli Devra, a very popular MP and minister uh, from Mumbai who's no more uh, and who was once described by a famous CPM stalwart in Parliament as the MP from Dariman Point. So this is Dariman Point, but what we are talking about today is not so much Bombay as national politics. So uh, why did the BJP lose these three states? There is a lot of analysis and it is quite cluttery. So let me try and make my little effort over the next few minutes to declutter. The first presumption is, or the first argument is that BJP didn't quite lose that badly. That the difference between the BJP and the Congress was really marginal, at least in the big states of Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. That is true. But the answer to that is that that's, don't see that only as the difference now. Look at the difference it is compared to the last. In these two states, BJP had an start, had a start of 10 to 12 percent. That is a lot in Indian politics. To lose that kind of advantage shows you that besides the polarized voters, people who will vote for Congress anyway, people who, who will vote for BJP anyway, the voters who actually decide who rules, who gets the power, they have moved away from BJP. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, what lost the BJP that vote? How did, how did the party squander an advantage of 10 to 12 percent like that? That has happened. Uh, you can say that in Rajasthan, the chief minister in on election, she was not so unpopular as you can see from these results. She still had a loyal core vote, but she had become controversial. In the other two states, the chief ministers were not controversial. In fact, they were quite like personally. Second, you say farm distress. Now, farm distress is common all over the country. But if you check these states also, the BJP has actually done relatively better in rural areas than the city. All the big cities, these are not particularly urban states, but all the big cities, BJP has been defeated quite badly. So there is also a middle class, lower middle class anger with people not getting jobs. So as you talk about farm, farm distress, we should not forget that a lot of the anger comes from young people not getting jobs. And to that extent, believing that the promise of Ache Din or two jobs was betrayed. Third, what happened to the charm of the Prime Minister? Usually, uh, the BJP would have thought, the BJP supporters would have thought, that it doesn't matter what ha what's happened. Once Narendra Modi comes, everything will be sorted out. And frankly, he did handle it this way in Gujarat. Uh, we saw this happen in Gujarat. It looked like BJP was in trouble, but he made one more flurry of visits, etc., etc., rallies. Uh, finally, he even took off uh, in a seaplane uh, from Narmada River. Uh, to make a last day uh, show in Ahmedabad and save that election for his party. He famously swept UP all by himself without telling anybody who his chief minister was going to be. Now you see that that capacity has lessened. So these elections tell you that Mr. Modi is no longer capable of sweeping any election by himself or holding, as I said earlier, a lamppost election. That is, I put up anybody, he will get elected. So that capacity is now lost. Again, the argument is, so what if this is lost in a state election? Come national elections, and once he goes seeking votes for himself, then it will all turn. Yes, there will be a difference when he goes seeking votes for himself. And maybe a little, if some of this vote which left the BJP will shift back to him. But that will not be enough for him to replicate the numbers he had got in the heartland the last time, 2014. And if he doesn't get 40, 50 of these seats out of uh, these well-weathered states, and if in UP's numbers will fall anyway, and if there's an alliance with SP and BSP's numbers may fall heavily, then that number of 200 also will begin to look challenging, in which case building a stable coalition will be much tougher. So he's got a problem. Uh, that is the lesson of these elections. Don't hide behind the fact that your margins were small and your overall vote was all wrong. Mr. Modi's magic is declining. Now, why is that happening? And here is a simple answer. Mr. Modi came to power in 2014. The dream he sold the people of India was better days, development, because, as, 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 as he said, fighting against corruption, 
clean government, big infrastructure, education, jobs. His performance and most promises is quite petty. And that is the message So what happened? We started out with development, with forgetting divisive issues, forgetting Pakistan, forgetting Muslims, forgetting uh, the temple, forgetting uh, Article 370. But not only did he allow all that to come back in, he also allowed, allowed people to discover a new political issue in India called the cow. Uh, and that issue does nothing to India's politics except divide the vote. So he won in 2014 quite comfortably and quite spectacularly without actively dividing. Now, in his fifth year, he's allowing a campaign of division. Indian voters are very smart. BJP has now thrown Ram Temple at them. They've thrown Muslims as terrorists at them. They've thrown cow slaughter at them. They've thrown ideas like Ali versus Bajrangbali or an idea like Congress doesn't even want me to say Bharat Mata ki jai. So even Bharat Mata has been thrown at the border, but the voters are interested in the promises you made because the voters don't see anybody as unpatriotic. So BJP situation right now has been, if I may put it, uh, in English you might say going, uh, going London reaching Tokyo. But in Hindi, uh, kind of Hindi that BJP people will understand, which is very proper heartland Hindi, which is Ayate Hari Bhajan Karne, Otne Lage Kapas. Difficult to translate this, that you would come to pray and you started uh, uh, making mails of cotton. But something more popular, if I may use a line, there was one Kishore Kumar song from Chalti Ka Naam Gadi, Jate Te Japan Pohaj Kaya Chin Samaj Kaya Naam. So, Mr. Modi had, had given you the promise literally of a Japan-like, resurgent, industrial, manufacturing uh, economy, which will have oodles of jobs. Job creation, whatever the data, is quite good. And if you want to see the evidence of that, that evidence is available in the way cities have put in the election. So, BJP can choose to ignore it. But if BJP learns the lesson, this is the time to go to the election. If they think that they are going to win 2019 with polarization or with this yogi, notification of BJP's politics, I'm afraid it's not going to work and they may end up with the results worse than what we have seen so far. But if they want to be a course direction, if they want to soften their rhetoric and their message, I think they can still be a because Mr. Modi personally continues to be quite popular. No other leader as well has risen in popularity to challenge him, not Rahul Gandhi yet. And when people go and think, oh, it's not Mr. Modi, who will be Prime Minister, he will have a disadvantage. But people also have to say, who is this Mr. Modi and what does Mr. Modi stand for? If Mr. Modi is standing for a temple which is, which is only talked about when elections come in, the cow, uh, Pakistan, uh, how bad India Muslims are, 